On the surface, the Akara Presence FP2 sensor seems to be perfect. It can create multiple zones, it can track different targets, and there's even a sleep monitoring mode that can track your heartbeat and how well you sleep. However, it's not as perfect as some of the other reviews out there make it seem, and depending on your setup, you might even be better saving your money and buying a different sensor instead. In this deep dive, I'm cutting through all the marketing noise. I'm gonna show you both the pros and the cons of the FP2's different modes and using them within Home Assistant. That way you can make a good decision on whether you wanna use the FP2 or whether you wanna go with something else. So let's dive in. The main selling point of the FP2 is that it has three different modes. There's a presence detection mode, which is what most people think of when they think of the FP2. The second mode is a fall detection mode where you can install it on the ceiling looking down on a room and it will attempt to detect people falling or tripping and then sending you an alert. And then the final mode is the sleep monitoring mode. The sleep monitoring mode tracks your heartbeat and your sleep movements at night and then gives you a report in the morning based on how you slept. I imagine most people are gonna use the Presence FP2 for presence detection. So after you choose presence detection, it'll prompt you to set up different zones in the app. Unfortunately, these zones are only configurable through the Akara app, but they are stored on the device. So even if you block access to the FP2 after you get it all set up and configured, the zones will still work and they'll still show up in the Home Assistant, but in order to change them or add new ones, you gotta load the app back up and make sure that there's a cloud connection. So what I would recommend is keeping it connected to the internet until you're finished configuring all the different zones and settings and that sort of thing, making sure it's real dialed in. And then once you're satisfied with it, then you can go ahead and look at disabling its internet access if you wanna go that route. So one thing I ran into was that when I was first setting up the FP2, I encountered the ghosts. Even though I was the only one in the room, the sensor was detecting multiple people instead of just me. And it turns out this is a common problem with FP2. It often detects multiple people, even though there's only one in there. This might be chalked up to the fact that it uses millimeter wave and millimeter wave is very sensitive. And so when you walk around, it knows that you're moving, but then if the ceiling fan is spinning or if the dog's walking by, then it might also detect that too. So maybe this means my place is haunted, but I was able to solve it by adding edges and enter and exit zones configured in the app. So if you have like a hallway or a front door or something like that, and the sensor is pointing at that area where you will leave its view and enter its view, you can add an enter or exit zone. And so similar thing with the edge zone type. And so adding those two things really helped the reliability of the presence detection of the FP2 in my experience. They do have some sort of AI detection mode where you make the room empty and it scans the room to see what objects are there regularly and then that helps it decide what's a false positive or not but still if someone's just plugging it in and they just want to use it to see when their kids come home or when someone walks through the door then it'd be nice to see it work well the first time instead of having to fiddle and configure with it okay so now that we've set up the fp2 we can actually add it to home assistant for now the only way for home assistant to connect with the fp2 is via the HomeKit integration. When you search for HomeKit in Home Assistant, you're gonna see two different options. You're gonna see the HomeKit Bridge and the HomeKit Device. For this one, you're gonna to wanna to select HomeKit Device, and this will connect Home Assistant to the Akara FP2. You're gonna need the code from the back of the device. And so once you've gotten the FP2 added, you'll go over to the integration page and you'll only see a couple of zones and the luminance sensor. In the FP2's HomeKit integration page, the top presence sensor, presence sensor number one, will detect whether someone is in any zone, no matter which number or which zone it is. As long as there is someone in one of the zones, that top sensor will be detected. And then each of the zones beneath it correspond to specific zones that we've configured in the Akara app previously. The names don't carry over, unfortunately, so you'll have to do a little guessing to figure out which zone is which one, but it should be easy enough to figure that out and then rename them in Home Assistant so you can tell which ones are which zones. It is pretty fast, I must say. This was actually a positive of the FP2 that I was pleasantly surprised with. When I created my different zones and I walked between them, I was able to see the state change in Home Assistant really quickly. So there's no noticeable lag when moving between the different zones when the FP2 is connected with HomeKit. Unfortunately, 
it's not like the Everything Presence light where you can see the number of targets in a specific room and where they're detected and so on. The FP2 won't show you the number of targets that it detects and it won't show you which zones have multiple targets in them or not. So that's a little disappointing. So let's go to fall detection mode. Basically, instead of putting the sensor on the side of the wall like you would with the presence detection mode, you mount the FP2 on the ceiling, and then you have to go back into the app, and, and under the device settings, you can switch the mode to fall detection. Quite honestly, even after installing the FP2 in an area of my room with a flat ceiling, I wasn't able to actually get it to trigger any falls. I pretended to fall a couple times, just some of them more realistic, some of them just kind of silly, and the app always said that no fall had been detected. So even if someone were trying to use the fall detection mode, with Home Assistant, it doesn't show any sensors. There's nothing to automate. To There's no way you could send a text if you fell or something like that through Home Assistant. It doesn't seem like it's worth paying $85 just to have the FP2 sitting on your ceiling for some potential future time where you might trip and fall and need something to happen. And the fall detection mode will wipe all of the settings that you had in the presence mode. So if you do wanted to switch for some reason, you would have to save off the zones as a template or something like that and then reload it afterwards. It's just kind of a hassle. So I don't recommend using the fall detection mode on the FP2. This next feature I think is an underrated feature of the Akara Presence FP2 that doesn't really get a whole lot of attention. The Presence FP2 offers a sleep monitoring mode. Basically you'll install the FP2 above your bed and you'll point it down at your pillow or the area where you sleep and you don't need to wear anything in order for it to track your sleeping. You don't need to wear like a Fitbit or something like that. Unfortunately, it only supports sleep monitoring for one person. So technically, if you wanted to get all these stats, you would need to get two FP2s in order to track you and someone else. When you hook the FP2 up into Home Assistant with sleep monitoring mode enabled, none of that data comes across. It all stays within the Akara app. Now, the one thing that's a little unsettling is that when you go into the Akara app under the sleep monitoring section, it says free trial. To me, that means that eventually they will start charging for you know a subscription, maybe $5 a month or something. But I could not for the life of me find out how much this subscription actually will be. I couldn't see when my trial ended or anything like that. So maybe the word free trial is a bit misleading here on Akara's part. They have left it open to charging later in the future. Right now they have said that all the features for sleep monitoring are included with the FP2, but saying the words currently included and a free trial means that they're leaving it open to start charging for it later. So if you're buying the FP2 for sleep monitoring, keep in mind that for now it's free. So that's kind of lame. I wish they would just be upfront with how much they want to charge or whether they're keeping it free forever. So ultimately, is the Akara Presence FP2 right for you? Well, so it really depends on what you're looking for. If you don't mind using the Akara app for just about everything, and if you don't mind putting in a little work up front to make sure that the zones and other things are configured correctly in the app before you start like really using it day to day, if you're cool with doing all that ahead of time and you're fine with using the app, then the Akara Presence FP2 is a great piece of hardware. It's really responsive, it looks sleek, it's durable, and you can put it pretty much anywhere, especially with the corner bracket mount. But if you were looking for a killer sensor to add to Home Assistant, where you'd be able to control all sorts of things and set up the configuration and get the number of targets that are in a zone, kind of disappointing from a Home Assistant point of view. And if you're trying to use the Presence FP2 with Home Assistant, then you'd be paying for a lot of good features that you wouldn't be able to use within Home Assistant. So if you're looking for a good millimeter wave presence sensor, check out the Everything Presence Light. Not only does that track targets and allow you to create zones just like the FP2, but it also lets you configure it directly through Home Assistant and you can completely block it from the internet and it works exactly as advertised. There aren't any features hidden behind a cloud connection or a subscription. So check out that video and I'll see you in the next one.